Uh, Minister, distinguished guests, collaborators and colleagues, I'm delighted you have joined us here today to be part of this conversation, because that's what it is, a conversation on research impact. In the past number of years, the term research impact is getting uh, used a lot more. And the reason for that is it reflects the focus that's been put on it at all levels, whether it be government, funding agencies or institutions. But what is exactly meant by research impact? What we found is that it's a term that some people use very narrowly and other people use very broadly. So it's not clearly or well defined in many cases. We also found that there was limited knowledge of what research impact is or its increasing importance in the rubric of measuring research outputs. And it is becoming much more important in that rubric. The purpose of today is to facilitate a dialogue about this and to share our story, and that's what it is, and part of Research Impact is using stories to tell, tell a tale of our journey and how we define and demonstrate research impact. The members of the panel here today are drawn from various sectors and they will share their experiences on research impact from different perspectives, and I hope this will be useful and informative for you because it is important that the message is spread and there's a clearer understanding of what research impact is. So a little bit about our journey in terms of research impact here at UL. As Don mentioned earlier, from our foundations, the university was established to be a connected university with a focus on relevance. This was facilitated through its structures, programs and cultures and continues today. Our graduate placement program ensures that our students and our staff are on a daily basis connected with the external organisations. Programs are co-developed with external partners to uh, ensure they are relevant to the needs of the students and to future employers. This strong external engagement through our education programs is mirrored in our research programs where the majority of the work we do involves external partners. Traditionally, research has been defined by many as the creation of new knowledge. But research at UL is not just about creating new knowledge, it's about translating that knowledge into something useful something that has impact in the real world. We believe that through its research, the University of Limerick is contributing to the betterment of our society and is helping make the knowledge economy a reality. UL research is making a difference, and one of the reasons we embarked on this research impact journey was a recognition that we need to get better at telling our story to ensure that the impact is, is far further reaching than we already have achieved. The UL research strategy, which many of the internal colleagues would realise in the past number of years, has been very focused on enhancing our research excellence by facilitating people to work in interdisciplinary teams. And you will hear today about research impact and the importance of working in teams, and also to translate this research into effective outcomes. As part of that strategy, over the past couple of years, we've been developing a number of performance metrics to track how we are performing. We recognise that the use of research metrics is not an exact science and also recognise that for universities globally it is a currency and it's something we need to understand and contribute to if we are to compete and it is a competitive environment. We also acknowledge that metrics are changing and that we still have a long ways to go to before we have metrics that fully value the breadth of the research outputs and outcomes that we can achieve. A quote that is particularly apt when talking about research impact is one from Einstein where he said, everything that can be counted does not necessarily count. Everything that counts cannot necessarily be measured. So with that context, we have tried to put in place metrics at UL that are holistic and also align with international best practice. We call them here at UL the six Ps. We added an extra P in the past year because we felt it was important. Those Ps are projects which represent funding, postgraduates, publications, practice impact, prestige and partnerships. We see these metrics as not being mutually exclusive, rather they form part of the research journey involving inputs, so the inputs may be project funding and postgraduate and partnerships, outputs like publications, patents, students and postdoctors that have been trained, and outcomes is really where impact comes in, measuring that outcome which ultimately will raise the prestige of the individual or the institution. There are quantitative measures for projects, postgrads, and publications, and we all know what those are. And there are some quantitative measures for practice impact, like patents, licenses. However, these measures uh, are far too limited because practice impact is much broader and should not be measured by just qualitative measures. Rather, we need quantitative measures to be used to consider the real effect that research can have. 
And part of our journey was understanding that, that across the university, it's not just important to look at economic output, but also the effect we have on society. So what we did, I, I worked with a number of researchers, because it's always important in the university sector to have people involved and have a bottom-up as well as a top-down approach. So we assembled a, an interdisciplinary team from right across the university from the four different faculties through a research leadership program to look at how we do better or how we figure out how to measure practice impact. That team, as any good team of researchers does, the first thing they did was go out and look at state of the art that was out there. They looked at the research excellence framework, or the REF as it's called in the UK, and also looked at other international systems. They had a number of interesting conclusions and recommendations, but their main conclusion was that the case study methodology is becoming an, ex an accepted way to present research impact. They also found that universities that focused and put a focus on research impact did better on some of the other metrics, including citations for their publications. And there was more of a quantitative, a qualitative um, evaluation of it impacting funding, postgraduates, etc. So following this, what we did um, put in place after this group recognised that case studies were important, we assembled another group of researchers, um, many of who were here today. Um, they were the guinea pigs for looking at what does a case study mean, and I much appreciate their input. So what this group did, um, we put in place the teams, we brought in experts from the UK who had been involved in working with HEFGI, which is the Higher Education Funding Council in England, who have a lot of experience in using case studies. We held lots of project meetings and uh, lots of soul searching into how do people express their research impact. And this was not just in a science and engineering context, it was across the four faculties. And I think that's what's important to get across today because we recognize that having research impact is not just about the economy. We fully support the government's position on this, but it's also about the wider effect on society. The case studies are an output and they're a real outcome, but the real outcome from this exercise is that the people involved, and if you get a chance to chat with them today, you'll see that this has changed their perspective. It's changed them in how they will think about their research question in the future. It has changed them about understanding part participation with other team members and the effect that has. It changes the journey that they're going to go on. So the next stage of our journey is to roll out this impact initiative at UL to build on the experience of the pilot that we've had and to build on our culture of research impact on the real world, which is a tradition at UL. As I mentioned, though economic impact is the forefront of government policies and we are committed to supporting this, we also see a key part of our mission is to enhance the society in which we live and work. We have many examples across the university where UL research is impacting our society. One of our research priorities is to support the health and well-being of people. We are working in partnership with many service practitioners and NGOs to enhance health and well-being. For example, we are working with Pieta House to evaluate the impact of suicide crisis services on communities. We have research partnerships with MS Ireland and Arthritis Ireland looking at interventions that will help improve patient outcomes. Some research findings are informing policies on wheelchair access and how to prevent and respond to overdoses in homeless people. These are just a small few examples of the many research active projects here at UL that are having a real impact. So in summary, research impact is becoming an important metric in the ever-changing rubric of evaluating research performance. We define research impact as the demonstrable contribution that excellent research makes to society and the economy beyond academia. The case study methodology requires that research to be excellent, evidenced through peer-reviewed journals, but it also requires demonstration links to the impact that it has. This demonstration can include evidence of changes to policy, process, or products. It's really important that the research excellence is validated. It's not just a loose testimonial by an individual or a fellow collaborator. Why impact is becoming more important can be summed up by the four A's, advocacy, allocation, accountability, and analysis. If you're advocating for funding, you will notice in the fiscal challenges and austerity that we've had to go through, many funding agencies are looking for impact as a key part of your application. In many cases, it makes up more than 50% of applications. Allocation of research resources based on impact beyond academia. In the UK, the REF is in place if they are to draw down funding, and we see this move occurring in Ireland through the HEA Compact 
which is looking at performance and measurement of performance. Accountability, where publicly funded research should aim to demonstrate a payback to society, and the importance of research analysis in leading to improvements in society. I would like to extend my thanks to the panel members for agreeing to be involved in this conversation today. I would like to thank the research leadership group who did the first project on how we evaluate impact, the case study team who worked uh, over the past year, uh, very patient with all of us as we learned the process and went through that journey. I'd like to thank Professor Helena Lenehan for her leadership, Christine Brennan in the press office for all the support on the communications plan, the members of my own team who helped in organising this event. I'd like to thank the Irish Times who partnered with us in this event. And I would like to thank you for your attention and hope you find this event informative. Thank you. Thank you.